Hey guys, it's Finn. Today I'll show you how you can save your network with all your wakes, your bars and so on, so we can make the learning steps more efficient. For doing this, we are going to need two more methods in our network class. But before we are doing so, we need to uh, we need our network to implement an interface, and this interface is serializable. Um, serializable, and this makes sure that we can uh, pass these values into a into a, te a txt file. And this is how it works. So we're going to need two methods. The first one will not return anything, and it will re uh, it will save the network. And what we need is we need the string where we are going to save the file. Uh, the second method that we are going to need is we are going to um, we want to load a network, but I'm going to make this one static so we can access this one without having a network to have it uh, return a network. I'm going to call it load network. And also it needs a string file. And these methods are um, they they look equal in uh, in the inside. Um, so let's start with the safe network method. Um, I have to start with creating a file. So file f is a new file uh, file like this. I need to import it, and it takes the string. The second thing I need is I need an object output stream. So object output stream out is a new object output stream and this one needs a file output stream a new file output stream and this one needs the file and this might throw an exception so I'm not going to surround with try catch but I'm going to add it to the uh, heading or to the, to the method uh, add and it can throw an exception um, next I am going to write something to the stream, so out.write object and um, the object that I'm writing is the current class, so I, I'm adding this then I need to flush the stream and after that I can close the stream and um, that's already it for saving the network this one is really easy to um, this is like I think the shortest code that I've found in the internet but there are a lot of ways where this doesn't work and I'll show you those and the load network is um, it's like it looks um, something like this, but instead of the object output stream, we've got an object input stream, and we got a file input stream as well. Um, and instead of writing something to that stream, we want to read something from that stream. So um, network net is out dot read. Uh, we need to read the object, but th uh, this one returns an object, so we need to cast it to a network, and that can um, happen like a lot of things, like a lot of things can go wrong here, um, so we have to add throws exceptions as well, and after that I'm going to close the stream, and then I'm going to return the network. Um, and this this should work, let's try, let's give it a try. So. I'm going to make a new network. Network net is a new network. Um, I'm just choosing some layer sizes. We should keep the, uh, these in mind because after this, I'm going to. The first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to save this network and then I'm going to load a new network and to check if the layer sizes are equal. We can see if uh, our loading and saving step worked. So network dot save network and I already created some files in here, so you can just ignore them. Um, I'm going to put a new file in our resource folder, and I'm going to call it um, maybe uh, test.txt. And um, this one throws an exception, so I have to start with try catch. And if I run this, this should hopefully work. And yeah, it does. So uh, in here, it created a new file, it's called test. And this one looks good, except we can't read this. So this is uh, done by Java, and this is like a computer language. Um, this might be binary, but I'm not sure about that. Um, and like we cannot read it, but it's uh, really easy for the PC to read that, especially for Java, for Java. And this is equal to the network class that we just saved in here. Um, the second thing that I'm going to I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to leave the try catch, but I'm going to load the network. So network net is network dot load network. 
And I'm going to use the same file, so uh, I think I call it test.txt. And um, then I'm going to system.out.println uh, arrays the two string of the network layer slices to see uh, network layer slices to see if it's actually the same network that we had before. And if I run this, this should hopefully work as well. Yeah, and it does. So uh, this works for now, but um, this method of saving and loading is usually really bad, and it's highly not recommend highly not recommended to use this one. I can show you why. Um, the the basic concept of using this is having the serializable interface implemented, and this um, gives every class an idea an an ID, and uh, whenever you change anything in your class, whenever I think you can even update Java or whatever, you can um, your each of your classes will get a new ID, and uh, this means that you cannot load an old class. So if I would add a new method that absolutely that does absolutely absolutely nothing, um, like I, I it, I'm not even using it. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't return anything. It's like it pretty much does not exist. And if I run the code again, it will return. Um, it will throw an exception because this ID is not equal to the ID that it read. So um, we got this uh, when we when we are loading the network, and it tries to. Um, read the object, we are telling it it's a network, but uh, it doesn't think that it's a network because like, here's a new method and in the uh, saved network class there um, hasn't been this method yet and that's why this doesn't work. And um, this is why I've created a new, I've created two new methods and they can be downloaded in the description. Um, and they're somewhere down here, yeah, here. And they, um, have the exactly same hat, so the exact the same name and whatever. Um, and I've created this one like a year ago, I think. And we need for this we need um, a new package that can be downloaded in the description as well. It's a parser package, and the difference is um, it it doesn't uh, use the network data or anything. It uh, just copies the the weights and the arrays into a um, into a string. And after that, it can uh, read the string and convert it to an array. And this would look something like um, this. So we got all the weights and all the bias somewhere. And uh, let's try this one. So I'm going to put in here, but in here. Um, I'm going to give this one a try. So network net is the new network. And um, I'm going to choose the same network again. And after that, I'm going to save the network, so net.save network, and this one I'm going uh, I'm going to save it in resources and test 2txt and um, if I run this. It should hopefully work, and it created a new file in here as well. And it's like you can you can see the weights for each neuron or for each connection. So for example, um, it's structured like this. We got the layers. There is no data saved for the first layer because we know the um, input size, so the, the amount of neurons in the first layer, but otherwise there are no weights, there's no bias in the first layer. So um, I'm going to start at the at index one, so the first hidden layer and the second layer in our network. And we got the weights to the previous layer, we got the bias for each neuron, and same for the second or output layer. Um, and I think that's really easy to read, and um, they can there, there shouldn't happen any exceptions, and you can uh, change your class. So I could remove. Um, I already removed that method, I think. I can add a new method right now. Public void nothing. And um, then I'm going to load the network again. So network the load network, and I'm going to choose resources and test two txt and. If I run this, this should work as well. So there's nothing happen. It works. Um, it does not depend on the methods inside the class. It just depends on the um, field. So we, we, um, I'm saving the um, output, the weights, and the bias, but I'm not saving the error signs and the output derivatives as well as the network layer sizes. Uh, and for this method, we do not need the implement serializable because that's only needed for the input and output streams. And uh, we can use these two methods 
uh, or at least the safe network method for um, making our learning steps way more efficient. So let's go back to uh, where we created the train set and the learning. Um, so for each epoch, we are going to save the network into a text file. So for this, I've added the string output file to the train data method. And um, in, in the loop, I'm going to um, call net.save um, net network to this output file. And um, by the way, if there already exists an output file, it's just going to override that one. And it has to be thrown by a try catch, um, like this. And if I run this, this should hopefully work. So I already created something in here. Uh, we got the network. I created a new network. It fits to the MNIST data set. Then I'm going to call the train data method. And um, it needs the network, the, it's, it needs a new train set. Uh, I'm running it a thousand times. Um, I've got 100 loops and a batch size of 100. And the output file is uh, resources mnist1.txt. And um, this one, this file has already been created, but you can just ignore that. It doesn't matter what you put in here. And if I run this, every time, um, so, wait, no, not like this. If I run this method, or if I run this main method, um, it's you can see uh, with, on, uh, with these things uh, in which epoch we are right now. And um, here it saved the network, and it saved the network here again, uh, again and again and again. Um, this method is slightly slower than the um, loading and saving method that I've shown to you before, but this is uh, way more consistent, so there, there can't happen anything wrong. It can't, it can't go wrong. And I think um, that's really good. And we, we don't want to save a network one time and can't open it the second time. So for example, why this is really useful, we could increase these, this number to like a really high number. So it would take days for our network to learn. And after like one day, we're like, okay, um, it's, it's fine, we don't want our network to learn anymore, then we're just going to stop the code from running. And the good thing is it created the uh, current weights in here. So we got um, the weights for the output layer, for the hidden layer, and so on. And after that, we don't have to train the network for one day again. So we just got the trained one day network. I'm just going to call uh, network.net as um, network.loadNetwork. And I'm going to load the resources.mnist1.txt and it throws an exception. We need to catch, the, catch that one. And then I'm going to test the train set. Like we did a really short period of training. So our um, testing should be like really bad right now, maybe 70% or less, but it needs the network. It needs a new train set. So we're going to create a new train set, go from 1000 to 2000 um, and it needs the print steps. I'm going to set it to 10. And if I run this, we don't have to do the training again. And the result is, um, yeah, 0 0.65, so 65%. This is not good, but if you would have the network running for way longer, you could just stop the um, training process and you would have a perfectly trained network. And this was already it for this video. And in the next video, I will show you how to visually represent our network in a J panel. And this is not necessary for understanding how network, networks work, but I hope to see you in the next video.